um, hi uh, today's video is on calculation of compass error by the azimuth method uh, using moon as a celestial body so my previous videos on this topic have uh, focused on the sun the stars and the planets as celestial bodies uh, so i thought i will i will uh, make a video on uh, how to calculate the compass error using moons as an example of a celestial body so i will be using the azimuth method here so i'll go straight into the question now the question is that it's uh, 6th of march 1992 uh, it's am at ship am at ship means this is uh, morning on your ship it's morning and it's 6th of march uh, your dead reckoning position uh, this stands for dead reckoning dead reckoning also means that it's an estimated position it's not an accurately known position all right so i will put estimated here just so that you guys know the meaning of dead reckoning and uh, the latitude is 30 degrees 30 north and 140 degrees 11 minutes west is the longitude uh, the bearing of moon as a celestial body uh, was uh, 105 degrees compass bearing so by compass it was 105 degrees uh, at the chronometer time 7 hours 35 minutes and 0 2 seconds that's the chronometer time and the error was 4 minutes and 6 seconds fast all right uh, if a variation was 2 degrees east you have to find the deviation of the compass all right so i'll go into the solution now so and before we go into the solution we have to solve uh, what we call is the ambiguity of the chronometer time so um, that means that if the chronometer time is given to us um, academically uh, it's 7 hours 35 minutes and 0 2 seconds but if you look at a chronometer it looks uh, pretty much like an analog watch um, with the hands right so if you look at the watch and you don't know what's going on outside you don't know if it's uh, 7 in the morning or 7 at night you won't know that if you look at the chronometer that's why we have to solve the ambiguity this is also important to determine the time of the GMT and also the date of the GMT. Uh, many students often ask me that uh, why do we have to do this uh, and the reason is that even if you get the GMT time from the GPS straight away or from some equipment straight away, you still have to have an idea about uh, the date at GMT because that date at GMT could be different from the date on your ship. And that's why it's a good idea to understand how the ambiguity of chronometer time works. Alright, so whenever the chronometer time is given to you, just add 12 hours to the hour, right? Just add 12 hours to this and uh, write down the other scenario that could be possible with the ambiguity time. Alright, so to avoid clutter, I'll erase this. Just add 12 hours. Alright, so you get two scenarios with the chronometer time. So the hours change, but the minutes and seconds remain the same. Mm, now your error is fast by 4 minutes and 6 seconds. That means... Uh, error has to be subtracted that means your chronometer was running ahead of its time so we must subtract the error normally errors are not uh, so much in amount it's normally in seconds only and you have to correct the chronometer but this is only for academic purposes all right so whenever the error is fast you will subtract the error if it's slow you will add the error so once you subtract the error you get uh, two possibilities of the gmt time again as you can see uh, how do I find out then what is the correct GMT time? To do that, we have to apply something called the zone correction. And what is zone? Zone is the practical way of timekeeping uh, on ships. So basically, ships cannot keep time as per their individual longitude, which is also called LIT or longitude in time. This LIT stands for longitude in time. Uh, according to longitude in time, every ship should have its individual time based on its longitude. But that's not a practical way of timekeeping, right? So that's where the world has been divided into zones. Um, so on either side of zero to zero, zero degrees, you have seven and a half and seven and a half on east and west. That's zone zero. And then after every 15 degrees, you retard one hour as you go west and you advance one hour as you go east. All right. So uh, that is zone. So if you are in a particular zone between a range of longitude, you have to keep that hour of time. Uh, irrespective of your longitude, individual longitude. And that's the practical way of timekeeping. Only then business can take place in the world. Right, so that's zone, but you get the zone from your longitude in time. So, what is longitude in time? Basically, uh, for academic purposes, you divide the uh, dr longitude given to you by 15. So, in this case, it's 140 degrees 11 minutes, and you divide by 15, you get 9 hours 20 minutes and 44 seconds. 
now lit is written in hours minutes and seconds but your zone is always a round number so you see where it is lying close to so is lit lying close to 9 hours or 10 hours so it's lying closer to 9 hours so i will make my zone 9 hours all right if it was 9 hours 35 minutes or 40 minutes i would have made it 10 hours and then because it's west longitude i will subtract i will subtract the 9 hours because if you are in west longitude that means gmt is ahead of you the time at gmt is more than the time on your ship if it's the east longitude you are ahead of gmt so if your ship is in east longitude your time will be ahead of gmt right so then once you subtract it in the second case of course it's 19 minus 9 which is 10 which is pretty straightforward for you guys but for some of you who didn't understand how did i subtract 9 hours from 7 well just add 24 hours to this and make it a bigger number and then subtract 9 hours and then you get the answer all right now i've got the zone time which is also the ship's mean time smt or the time kept on the ship so basically on your watch it will be zone time when you are on the ship all right now how do i know which is the correct gmt so i will know the correct gmt by the hint given to me in the question the hint says that it's morning on my ship it's am at my ship and it's 6th of march there so out of the two cases i know it's only the second case that it's morning so this is an am time 10 o'clock in the morning so it must be 6th of march here and that's why at gmt also it must be 6th of march all right so i've just read uh, the time on my ship is just nine hours behind gmt and gmt is nine hours ahead of me but still the same date is still of 6th of march so i will cancel out the first case i don't need the first case here and that's why i'll take this gmt time here Right, so don't use the zone time many students in excitement or in a rush they use start using the zone time or the ship's mean time for the rest of the question uh, don't do that use the gmt time so the gmt time you can highlight in the question or rather in your answers so that you don't forget to use the gmt time so gmt is 6th of march 19 hours 30 minutes and 56 seconds so with that i will find out the gh of the moon first i will go for 6th of march 1992 uh, at 1900 hours then I will find out the increment which is always added and this will be for 30 minutes and 56 seconds and then I will also find out the V value so I can get the V correction from the increments page also from the increments page alright so this is also from the increments pages for 30 minutes you will get it there alright so let's get into the almanac and because we are adding everything uh, let's get into the almanac for 6th of march 19 hours and then 30 minutes and 56 seconds all right so i'll show you where all to get the values from so you can see this is the 6th of march 1992 i'll use the red pen so i can show you i need to keep the whole screen open for you um, because uh, if i focus on moon then you will not be able to see the hours uh, so so you can see moon is here right that's your celestial body 6th of march is here all right you have to find for 19 hours so that's why i said if i zoom in you will not be able to find it so if i keep going straight so you know that 19 hours will be somewhere here this is the gh of moon at 19 hours 80 degrees 46.2 your uh, v value is given here your gh is here your declination is here your d value is here and your horizontal parallax is here so don't worry about horizontal parallax at this stage here you don't need it we'll talk about it in the next video so your gh is 80 degrees what is it then your v value is given as 14.1 this is just the v value your declination is here 9 degrees 19.7 minutes north and your d value is 12.1 all right so you can pause the screen here and look at those values again and how i got it I'll keep going, I'll go back to the uh, solution, I'll show you that these are the values I've been using. Alright, so if you see here, then you can see the GHA value and the V value of 14.1. I have not yet found out the increment, I'll find that out and I have not yet found out the uh, V correction value as well. Declination as I showed you here and then this is the D value that I, I was showing you at. Alright, so these are the, so I have shown you this value here and this value here and these two values here as well. All right, now I'll go into the increments page for 30 minutes and 56 seconds and I'll find out my V value, V correction and D correction for the V and D values and I'll also find out my increment. 
let's say go back and uh, I'll go into the increments page for 30 minutes and 56 seconds and that's it this is my increments page so this is for 30 minutes All right and uh, 56 seconds so this is 30 minutes right and this is 56 seconds will be somewhere here all right this is my moon column so i will look under the moon column so i get my increment here 7 degrees 22.9 and my v and d value correction i will get from this column here all right so this is my v and d correction value 14.1 uh, was the v, v, v value so i will go here and i will find 14.1 is somewhere here this is my v so my v correction will be 7.2 all right sorry i have just logged it so that you can see it but this is my v value and this is my v correction and my d value was 12.1 and this is 6.2 is my declination so this is for the declination all right again you can pause this video here and go through this again and see where these values are um, obtained from but i'll go back into the solution and i'll keep going with the video so you can see that i've got the v correction here 7.2 from the increments page i've got the increment as well i showed you from where then i can show you the declination as well and the declination correction is added here because the declination from 1900 hours to 2000 hours for moon was increasing okay, so it was increasing so that's why you add the declination if it was decreasing you would uh, decrease it all right so declination value from 1900 hours to 2000 hours was increasing that's why i've added the declination so correction so once i add the declination correction i've got the declination here i've got the dr latitude from the question here so i'll go back to the gha so i've added the increment of the v correction i get the gha for 19 hours 30 minutes and 56 seconds this is the gha then i have to add the final correction or rather add or subtract depending on the longitude so the longitude is west so i will subtract it because longitude west uh, the rule of thumb is GHA is the best so that means GHA should be more than LHA so GHA has to be more than LHA if longitude was east GHA would be least that means GHA would have been less than LHA so if I am subtracting a bigger number uh, from a smaller number you don't have to worry about it just add 360 and make the GHA more once you add 360 just subtract the smaller number then then the longitude becomes a smaller number and you get your LHA. Your LHA is 308 degrees 5.3 and you will name it east because LHA if LHA is between 0 to 180 it is west if it is more than 180 to 360 then it is east. Alright that's the position of the celestial body with reference to you as an observer on the celestial sphere. Alright with these values because it's a compass error question go straight away into calculating the components of A and B so a is calculated by dividing tan lat by tan lha put in the values of the latitude and lha here you will get 0 0.46 uh, you will get a negative sign in the calculator ignore the negative sign don't worry about it but you have to name it and you name it opposite to latitude unless lha is between 90 and 270 so your lha is 008 it is not between 90 and 270 so you will name it opposite to latitude that means if latitude is north i will name it south Alright, so you can see latitude is north, I will name it south. Then you calculate component of B, and that's calculated by dividing tan declination by sine of LHA. Put in the values of the declination and LHA from above. Again, you will get a negative sign, you ignore the negative sign. Put in the value of 0 0.21. Uh, normally, we stick to two decimal places, you can stick to more, it doesn't matter. There is no rule as such. So, the more the decimal places, the more is the accuracy. Um, you can go five six doesn't matter if you have the time in the exam otherwise just stick to two or just listen to whatever your lecturer tells you to do all right and then you name it north because it is named same as declination all right then put down the values of a and b here the rule is if they are different names that is if they are south and north you will subtract it if they were same names like north and north and south and south you would have added it so because they are different names you will subtract it and you will retain the name of the larger that means if south is larger you will retain the name for c as south so once you subtract it you get the value of c as 0.25 south then you can finally calculate the tan of the azimuth that means tan of the bearing of the celestial body from you as an observer on the celestial sphere is calculated by dividing 1 by 
c times cos of lat c you know is 0.25 and latitude just put cos of the dr lat here solve the denominator first as i have and then divide one by it and you get the answer take tan to the other side it becomes tan inverse tan inverse of this value will give you a bearing of 77.8 degrees in your calculator all right now because it's bearing i like to work with whole numbers or round numbers you can continue with this many books they continue with the decimal doesn't matter but i continue or rather i like whole numbers because sometimes these bearings have to be plotted also on the chart but for compass error purposes stick to decimals if you want to all right so then i have just uh, made 78 degrees so i have just rounded it off to 78 rounded off to 78 but uh, when you're calculating compass errors continue with decimals so that gives you the compass error in exact compass error uh, but it's your choice and whatever your lecturer tells you all right both the answers are correct and then you name the bearing south and east where did i get these ones from so south i get from c name of c all right name of c so you can see here c is south so i have named it south e i get from lha i have named my lha before east so i will name it east south 78 east also means sorry also means 102 degrees true that means this is south and this is east you are going 78 degrees to the east so if this is 180 and this is 090 somewhere here is your bearing so this also means it's 102 degrees true that's why your true bearing is 102 degrees true then you take the compass bearing given to you in the question itself it's 105 so your compass error will be 3 degrees west because compass best error is west all right so here the rule is so i should erase this problem if it's getting too much for you so compass error is west if the compass bearing is more than the true bearing all right so compass best error is west so if compass is more than true error is west and then you have your variation as two degrees east variation uh, is the angle between true and magnetic and the combination of variation and deviation gives you your compass error so because uh, compass error is west and variation is east your deviation will be five degrees west all right if you don't understand how to do this so you can just add to take the name of the larger here but i want to uh, want you to understand this conceptually so i have drawn this diagram here so if you see the true bearing is 102 degrees drawn in black which is here and your compass bearing is 105 degrees drawn in blue here since your compass lies on the west of the true your uh, compass error becomes three degrees west which is this value here all right then your variation is two degrees east variation is nothing but the angle between true bearing and magnetic bearing so your magnetic lies on the east because your variation is east so here is your magnetic bearing so it will be somewhere around 100 degrees right 100 degrees true and this is your variation is two degrees east therefore your deviation which is the angle between the magnetic and the compass so you have to see where is your compass bearing lying with respect to magnetic and you will see compass is lying on the west this is your deviation so that's shown in green so that's why your deviation is five degrees west all right so different people have different rule of thumbs but i like to understand things conceptually so i'd never forget it and in the exam i don't have to rely on rule of thumbs uh, so I hope this video was easy to understand. If you have any questions, uh, again, please uh, write uh, in the comment section. And again, I want to thank all my subscribers and people who follow me and give me suggestions to make videos. And uh, all the feedback, good and bad, uh, I love it. Thank you guys. I'll see you soon with the next video.